In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus comes back from praying and he finds Peter, James, and John asleep. And he says to them, could you not pray with me for one hour and pray lest you fall into temptation? And the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Why was he so adamant on them praying? What happens when we pray today on Hot Topics? Hi, this is Robert Furrow and welcome to Hot Topics. If you're new here, consider subscribing and ringing the bell so you can get all of our new videos. The comment section is open below. We would love to hear from you. We answer biblical questions and your questions through the lens of scripture. Prayer is that great gift that has been given to us by God so that we can somehow reach up into heaven, reach up into eternity and talk with him. Prayer is that great gift that we have been given by God to reach out from this earth up into heaven. And today we wanna to look at what happens when we pray. First of all, we interact with God, which may be one of the most powerful things that happen when we pray. Because Jesus said in John 17, three, and this is eternal life, that you know the one true God and the son whom he sent. And if we don't interact with him, if we don't talk with him, spend time with him, how are we ever going to know him? He didn't say eternal life was knowing about the one true God, but it was actually knowing him. And prayer gives us that opportunity that we can interact with him, that we can get to know him, spend time with him, allow him to work in our hearts that we can become the men and women God wants us to be. The next thing that the Bible tells us happens when we pray is that we receive when we ask. Jesus said in Matthew 7, 7 through 11, Ask, and it will be given unto you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And he who seeks, finds. And he who knocks, it will be opened. Or what man is there among you? If his son asks for bread, will you give him a stone? Or if he asks for fish, will you give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give good things to those who ask him? The promise that if we ask, we will receive is very powerful. In the Lord's Prayer, we were told to pray things like, give us this day our daily bread. And God has promised us that he will answer those, which means that if we're not praying, then we're not receiving all of the things that God wants for us. The third thing that should happen when we are praying is that we should be seeking the will of God. We remember Jesus saying, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus prayed three times that the cup would be taken from him. But he said, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. It's a good thing for us to pray according to God's will. And maybe after we have asked for something to say to him, I really want what you want, God, whatever your will is. That's an important part of prayer. One of the things that happens when we pray as well is that we change destinies, sometimes our own and sometimes other people. There is intercessory prayer when we are lifting up the people around us that are going through difficulties and struggles. Many mothers have prayed for their sons and seen God change their lives. I think of King Hezekiah in 2 Kings 20 when he is told by Isaiah that God told him to come and tell him that he was going to die. The sickness that he had, he was going to die from. And then he leaves, but God stops him because Isaiah turned his face to the wall and cried out to God, and God heard his prayer and gave him 15 more years. This tells us that there is power in our prayers, and that prayer changes things, and prayer changes people, and prayer changes destinies. If we know that, if we believe it, I think we'll be a lot more likely to spend time praying. The next thing that should happen when we pray is that we should be effective. The Bible says in James 5, 16, the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man accomplishes much. A couple of things that are said there. Number one, that you would be fervent. Again, this means that you're not just going through the motions, making some kind of a religious prayer. You're not putting your thought and your passion behind it. But it means that you are fervent and you're calling out to God with real emotion. There's something about that genuineness that God responds to and God answers. I think of Elijah falling on the ground and, and, and praying that God would send rain and praying fervently seven times and then God making a cloud the size of a man's fist, it says, 
And Elijah said, let's get out of here before the rain starts because he knew that God was doing something. God honors fervent prayer. It also says the effective fervent prayer of the righteous man accomplishes much, which means that God's listening to our prayers and prayers do change things when we are right with him. We need to be right with other people as we're going to see in a moment, but we need to be right with God. If somehow you don't have a right relationship with God and you need God to do something for you, you need him to move in the lives of one of your children or the people around you, then stop for a moment. Consider where you are. Consider whether there's something in your life that you need to repent from and make things right between you and God because the fervent, effective prayer of a righteous man accomplishes much. The next thing we're told is that we are to persist in prayer, that God doesn't want us to stop. The Bible says through faith and patience, we receive the promises of God in Hebrews 6, 12. There's two parables that Jesus tells. One of them is the parable of the annoyed neighbor. It's the middle of the night. A neighbor has visitors. He doesn't have any bread for them. So he goes to his friend and neighbor's house and he knocks on the door. He says, go away. I'm in bed. The kids are asleep, but he keeps knocking. Finally, Jesus said he gets up and gives him the bread, not because he wanted to give it to him, but because he kept knocking. And so we think, Does God just want us to keep asking until he's annoyed and finally gives it to us? Not at all. It's a parable of contrast. If the annoyed neighbor will get up and give what this man wants just because he's persistent, how much more will a heavenly father give to you what you're asking for when you keep asking? It's very powerful. The same thing is true with the unjust judge who finally rules for a a widow who has annoyed him morning after morning. God's not annoyed when we pray. But if an unjust judge will finally rule for someone because they continue and they persist, how much more will God, the just judge, work on our behalf when we persist in our prayers? We have to have faith. Faith is to trust that God's going to do it. And we continue to pray. And God has promised that he will answer those prayers. Through faith and patience, we inherit the promises of God. Finally, it's important for us to realize that our prayers could be hindered. The Bible tells us that we don't receive because we don't ask. The first thing that could hinder prayer is prayerlessness, just not praying like the disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane. They were tempted later on that night. They could have been praying about that temptation. We ask and God gives to us. And then the Bible says we don't have when we ask because we ask amiss, wanting to spend it on our own pleasures. We use prayer very selfishly instead of seeking what God wants and seeking what God could do in the lives of other people. When we get onto the right page and we begin to pray the will of God and we begin to pray in the name of Jesus and we are praying for things that he will answer, then prayer becomes very powerful. Finally, the Bible tells us that our prayers can be hindered if we don't have right relationships. Specifically, it says, husbands, your prayers may be hindered because you're not treating your wife the way that you should. I think that that could be expounded to other people that if we are mistreating people around us, if we are not being considerate and kind and loving and all the things that we are supposed to be in Christ to our spouses or to our children or to the people around us, then our prayers are hindered. But when we're in a right relationship with the people around us, especially the people close to us like our spouses and with God, there's something very powerful with our prayers. When we get ready to pray, we want to make sure things are right between us and God, but we also want to make sure that we have things right with the people around us. Remember, Jesus said, if you're ready to give your gift at the altar, but you remember that someone has something against you, leave your gift and go and make it right and then come back and give your gift. The same thing is true with prayer. Make things right with the people around you so that your prayers are not hindered. I hope this video has been helpful to you. If you've liked it, click the like button. We'll see you next time on Hot Topics.